Okay, let's talk about topic number two in organic chemistry. Today's topic is unsaturated hydrocarbons, and there are two families that fall under that category. Okay, we are still talking about hydrocarbons in straight chains. That is things that are made up of only hydrogen and carbon. Okay, but when I say unsaturated, what I am telling you is that there is a multiple bond between two of the C's in that carbon chain. What I mean by a multiple bond, it's either going to be a carbon to carbon double bond, looks almost like an equal sign, or it's a carbon to carbon triple bond where there are three lines or six pairs, I'm sorry, six electrons that are being shared. All right, so let's take a look at what we've got. Okay, now the first thing that you should probably see is that there is no such thing as a one carbon uh, double bonded situation between two carbons because there aren't enough carbons to make that work. So the one carbon alkene doesn't exist. The smallest one you can get is if we have two carbons with a double bond in between them. You'll see that the rest of the bond positions for the carbon are occupied by a hydrogen. So still, all of our carbons have one, two, three, four bonds, one, two, three, four bonds. The formula for this is C2H4, and we call it ethene. F, because there are two carbons, and I found that prefix in table P. Ene as its last name, because that's what's indicating that there's a double bond. The next smallest alkene that we can draw has three carbons in a series. Now what I would like us to emphasize is that there's only one double bond. It's not double bonds all the way across. So I have chosen to put the double bond right here. The rest of the carbon bonding positions are occupied by a hydrogen. So you'll see one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. All of our carbons have four bonds. This structure right here has a formula of C3H6, and we call it propene. Propene, prop because there are three carbons in the series, and ene because there's a double bond inside of it. Okay, again, we do not have double bonds all the way across. So the alkene family, these are some notes that you should copy down. We are talking about straight chains of carbon with a double bond between two of the carbons. Again, we're talking about substances that contain carbon and hydrogen. You can look at table P to help you with the naming, at least the front half, talking about how many carbons there are, but all of them should end in an E-N-E. All right, now the general formula. Again, you need to be familiar, familiar with the general formula, which you can find in table Q, but I want you to be able to see it as well. If you look here, if this is our number N, when we look at the number of hydrogens that we have, it looks like we've doubled that number. We can come over here, three, and then that's doubled to make it six. So the general formula, whatever number of carbons you have, you're gonna have twice as many hydrogens. Where did the two extra hydrogens come from of go that were in our alkane family? As soon as you break the bonds with the hydrogens here so you can make your double bond, those hydrogens disappear. So that's why we have two less than in the families we were looking at yesterday. Okay, so these are your alkene family. Make sure you've copied down the pictures and the notes before you move on to the next part of the video. Okay, the next family that you need to be familiar with is known as the alkynes. Alkynes cannot possibly have just a one carbon version because we need to have a triple bond between the two carbons. So there's no such thing as a one carbon alkyne. The smallest alkyne that exists has two carbons triple bonded together, and then the only bond position left is devoted to the hydrogen. So this formula is C2H2, and we call this F because there's two carbons. Ethyne, Y-N-E is the ending when we have a triple bond. The next smallest alkyne that you can have looks like this one right here. I just chose one of the two positions for the triple bond. We have a carbon to carbon triple bond here in our three carbon series. You will notice that this carbon right here has room for one more bond, but this one here has three from the triple bond and one from the carbon bond on the other side. So this one does not have any hydrogen at all. 
whereas this carbon that's on the end actually has three hydrogens. Okay, so this whole structure right here has the formula C3H4. We call this propine. Propine, prop meaning three carbons. Y-N-E or ine, the ending tells us there's a triple bond that's in there. Now, we don't need to get too specific about the naming and the bond position at this point. That's on our next slide. Let's take some quick notes about alkynes first, and then I'll elaborate on what we need to talk about in related to this bond position. Alkynes, they all have an ending of Y-N-E. Again, straight chains of carbon with a triple bond that's between the carbons. That's what makes this family special. They contain carbon and hydrogen. We can use table P, the prefixes for the naming. Now the general formula. You need to be familiar with the general formula. You can find it in table Q of your reference table. But let's take a look. When I look here, there are two carbons and two hydrogens. So it may almost be a one-to-one -one relationship. Let's see if we can continue that over here. I look over here, there are three carbons, but there are four hydrogens. So it's not quite one to one. In fact, what we're going to have is double the number of, I'm sorry, let's count up your carbons, double it. That's the number of hydrogens, but then you need to subtract two. We lose two more hydrogens because we have another bond that's being present here between the carbons. And that means we need to remove two more hydrogens. So that's how it's different from the alkene family. Your general formula, CnH2n minus 2. Make sure you've copied down all these notes before we move on to the next one. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are ready to move on to something a little bit more complex. You probably noticed that there were a couple different places I could put my multiple bond in the structures that I was drawing before. I have three different possibilities that I've listed here. So there are four carbons in a chain. I could have a carbon to carbon double bond in the first position. I could have a carbon to carbon double bond in the second position or the middle. I could also have a carbon to carbon bond in the third position or on the other end. Before we can get into naming, we need to fix these up a little bit because some of my carbons have too many bonds. Another hint I'd like to show you, because I have drawn the bond, I actually don't need to write the hydrogen. We've done enough practice where we've seen kind of a lot of them. They look almost like caterpillars with all those hydrogens all the way around. So what I'm going to start using now is a little bit of shorthand. This bond tells me there's a hydrogen that is understood to be right here, but I don't have to draw it. So now when I look over here, this carbon, the first carbon, has one, two, three, four, five bonds. That's too many, so I'm going to get rid of one. Now that one has four. This carbon here that's in the second position, one, two, three, four, five. Again, that one has too many, so I'm going to get rid of one. All right, that looks much better. Here, around my double bond, I look at this carbon that's just to the left of it, one, two, three, four, five. That has one too many, so I take out one. And I do the same thing over here. And in this example, just count up the number of bonds. You'll find you have one too many hydrogens. And so you just get rid of them. All right, let's name this. This substance has one, two, three, four carbons in a row. So it is butte, not but, butte, okay? Now it has a double bond within that carbon chain, and so that's part of the alkene family, butene. But so is this, four carbons, bute, we have a double bond, butene, and so is this right here, four carbons, double bond in that chain, butene. But this and this, do not behave in exactly the same way. Because of where that double bond is located, this actually has some slightly different behaviors than this one does. This double bond is a little bit more exposed, it's at the end. This one is a little bit more protected, it's there in the center, okay? And so what we actually need to do is we need to start numbering our carbons to indicate where that double bond is located. All 
right? So I'm going to use my green marker right here. I'm going to label this carbon 1. This is carbon 2. This is carbon 3. And this is carbon 4. The way that we use this numbering system, we find the lowest number carbon that is attached to the double bond or the special thing we're talking about. And so then we would say that this is 1 dash butene or 1 butene. Okay. We're going to use the same procedure down here. 1, 2, 3, and 4. We then find the lowest number carbon that is attached to the double bond. So this one here is 2 butene. When we take a look at this one right here, what I want you to see, and this is where things get a little tricky, you need to identify what is the end that is closest to the double bond. That's where we start numbering. One, two, three, four. Okay. Then, just like we did before, we find the lowest number carbon that is attached to the double bond. And so this is another example of one butene. There is no such thing as three butene. It doesn't exist. It's a mirror image of this one up here. These are three dimensional molecules that float around in space. And so this one will behave just like this one. And so they have the same name. That is one of the little tricks that I need you to be able to do. All right, I need you to be able to find the best way to number those carbons so your double bond or your triple bond has the lowest number possible. Alright, I think you're ready. Let's try these. I would like you guys to copy down these problems on a piece of paper and bring it with you to class tomorrow. I would like you to draw structures, including all the C's and the little bonds, for ethene. I would like another structure for 2-hexene, and I would like a structure for pentyme. Please be very specific and clear with your drawings. All right. The next thing I need you to do is name and classify. When I say classify, I need you to tell me, is it an alkane, is it an alkene, or is it an alkyne? Which family does it belong to? So you've got C5H10, C10H18, and finally C3H8. Good luck, and bring me what you got tomorrow.